two hours wasted. I could have had more fun watching paint dry than watching Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Hello, you beautiful bastards. Today we're reviewing Rebel Moon, The Scar Giver. Zack Snyder's attempt to dethrone Star Wars is an utter failure, in my personal opinion. Now, um, if you have not seen the first part, I'm going to put a link in the description. Not a link, I'm going to put it somewhere above me here, where you're going to see the first description or the first review of the first part. I already did the first part, so you can check that out. I'm, I don't know where I'm going to put it, but it's going to be somewhere above me. <laughs> You'll see it anytime now. Anyway, uh, let's talk about this um, Rebel Moon thing. It's about two hours long at most. Um, it's the weirdest shit I've ever seen. We're, we're going to... Let, let's look at this fact. So, in the last part... Cora assumes or kills uh Amaral, uh what's this guy's name Noble Atticus Noble he kills him and somehow he has these regenerative powers and his fleet somehow bring him back to life I don't know how they do it but it's all tech you know sciencey brilliant oh my god we're about to see a battle we have an impending battle amongst us and some of the strangest things happen in the world like okay the villagers harvest all the wheat. In four days, my friend, four days, and somehow have the capacity and the ability to dig out tunnels, uh, 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 to build trenches in less than two days. And don't forget, even training military wise to shoot guns. You have a bunch of kids. There's this kid who's shooting this laser top of gun, it's bigger than her, my dude. There's no recoil. I don't know what's going on here, but whatever. It's a laser gun. There's no recoil. Who gives a shit? It's a movie. Calm the fuck down. And then there's this uh, uh, warrior digger with the. Uh, what's this guy's name? Um, I forgot his name. The guy with the tan and with the swords acting like he's Thor with the six packs. And for some weird reason, everybody's shooting laser guns and and pa 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 pa. And somehow, everybody misses this guy. And every time the villagers take a shot at an enemy trooper, oh, they kill them all for some weird reason. The these niggas, uh, the motherland warriors, they've got weapons, man. They got cannons and everything. Every time they fire, they can't kill nobody. Oh, they can't kill nobody. But the villagers, oh my god, they got the skills to do it. And the whole film, basically, the first half of the film, basically, it's a bunch of flashbacks and a bunch of dudes farming. Jack Snyder, this is rubbish. But I will say, I will say, I really like the lightsaber things, or the, the glowing sword thingamajiggy. You know, when a lightsaber... I've never seen a lightsaber cut someone's head off in Star Wars, unless I'm, someone can tell me they've seen that. Then again, I didn't see it in in this shit too, but I'm assuming when Korra trapped the Admiral Noble in between a door with half of his torso below and took the blade, she chopped his head off. I'm sorry for spoiling it, but you probably don't even need to watch it to understand this is utter garbage. And, and don't, don't get me started on Cora cutting her hair off, uh, trying to look like a dude for some weird apparent reason. And when she does that, apparently it makes her more badass, more powerful, apparently. I don't know how, but it does. It really makes her powerful. So powerful that she takes over a ship and kills everybody in the ship. That's how powerful she gets. Just by simply, you guessed it. Cutting her hair. Yeah. And, and then there's this uh, Revenger chick who cuts off her hand to put in a metallic hand, which is the weirdest shit ever. Why would you cut your hand off? And then the worst part, these hands don't got any special traits to them. They ain't got any special weapon. They just hold a goddamn blade. That you can hold with a pair of gloves. But apparently these fucking hands are from our ancestors. Dude, they're fucking mechanic hands. And then when they chop them off, you can literally see her whole fucking hand. Like, you see it from the wrist. But in the clip, she cut her hand right... Or, or, or the camera, right? She cut her hand right here. 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 Excuse me. Okay. 
here's the hand. In the clip where someone chops her, her wrist off or hand off, they chop it here. They chop it here. Uh, what I'm saying is, it's chopped from here. The thing is, the guy chops her hand from here, right here, near the near the elbow. But in the clip, they show the wrist. They show that it's been cut from here, which means where the hell is this portion of the hand? But who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? And, and, and then we're also talking about the dude with the tan, the, the so-called prince fella. This this prince character fella says that fighting for this village somehow makes him want to go back home and fight for his people. But instead of doing that, he stays and risks his life fighting for these people. Okay, no problem. At end and at the end of the fucking film, when 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 General Titus says, "I know who you are, child. The 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 Light Princess lives." Everybody's like, "Ooh, the Light Princess lives." And, and, and instead of this prince nigga saying, I'm going home, niggas. He says, I'll go with you, Clara. I'll go fight with you. Nigga, didn't you say you're going to go home and fight for your own village? What the fuck is wrong with these people? But whatever. I don't know how many movie Snyder's going to get. I don't know how much Netflix is going to keep pumping money into this shit. I know a lot of people going to be watching it. That's a fact. Because when I saw it, I jumped straight into it. No. Initially, I gave the first one great reviews. I enjoyed it. I did. I had a few issues, but I didn't address them that much because I kind of enjoyed it. Ah, this one. Ah, where do I begin? I mean, like, in four days, they harvested wheat. And then in two days, they collected the wheat from the fields to the village, barricaded the doors and buildings with the wheat in pretense to make the, the whole uh, motherland admiral ship not strike them with ease. Okay, makes sense to me. Like if you're using the thing that they want as a shield, they can't blow you up. But they took two days to haul it in. Mm -hmm. To haul it into the village. While hauling it in, they had enough time to dig a tunnel. I don't know if you've dug a tunnel before. That shit is hard. Unless you have some mechanics. And they motherfuckers didn't even have a, a caterpillar. Not a caterpillar. A tractor. You know what I mean by a caterpillar. Because the tractor companies and the, the, the forklift companies. You know, it's called caterpillar whatever. Um, this is in my mind. But one thing I did enjoy... Okay, what did I enjoy? Nothing, really. I mean, like, the so-called rebels. This damn thing is called Rebel Moon, but the rebels don't show up. They show up at the last of fucking minute, coming with ships and act taking all the glory. I don't even get me started on Anthony Hopkins' so-called James Robot. The guy who narrates the whole thing is James Hopkins. He plays a robot in there. The robot shows up after... Well, tons of dudes have died. And, and the weirdest part is, somehow, all those weakest villagers somehow live. So far, the strongest villagers. The guy who, was, who fought Emerald Noble barehanded. That guy died. And when you think about him fighting Noble or Atticus Noble barehanded, Noble treated him like a child. He threw him. He threw him. He swung him with his bare hands. And there's even a scene after Atticus Noble is resurrected from the dead. He he basically lifts a man with his hand. But for some fucking reason, he cannot choke the life out of Korra. The guy with all the strength in the world. He can't choke a bitch out. He just can't choke her like the other guy. He can't do it. I'm joking on my god. Well, the robot is kind of cool, though. I will say, usually with lightsabers, uh, you see, tutu, 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 that thing, and you see uh, a little black bl blackness, like someone got shot, but you don't actually see them shot, because I'm assuming lightsabers penetrate your skin or whatever. With this, every time a laser or a blade, a little lava is emitted. Now, I don't know. How the fuck is lava being emitted from hitting my flesh? Is that burnt skin? Okay. If it's burnt skin, fine. 
I'll go with it. But for some weird reason, every time a, a saber shoots a nigger or a sword, shoom, slashes a nigger up, there's lava spilling. Now, I, I've seen a nigger being burnt before, but I didn't, they were not burned with that level of penetration. I'm just saying, why is lava flowing everywhere? When you're hitting a brick, there's lava. Lava fat. And for some weird reason, nothing catches fire. Oh, what can I say? But I'll say that uh, I expected a, a phenomenal battle. But we could say that the demise of Noble was because of his arrogance that he wanted to capture Korra. That's why they were defeated. Because it makes no fucking sense. A, a group of men with all the fucking weapons in the world, the whole goddamn armor, with with uh, with spider-like creatures or spider-like uh, tanks that have legs and shit, they crawling and shit, mm, with ships uh, 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 and all sorts of uh, firing equipment, somehow get beaten by a bunch of farmers with kitchen knives and spoons. It makes total sense, Mr. Snyder. It makes great sense. But hey, it makes sense. They kill them all. And another thing, when Korra kills or shoots uh, this Princess of Light girl, and then they say seize her, in a room where everybody killed them, she shot a couple of people. And she manages to escape from the chamber wherever they were to getting a shadow. No one shoots the bitch. Really? And for some weird reason, if she claims she killed a princess, how the fuck is the princess alive if she was killed in a room of people who wanted to kill her ass? How is she alive? You mean to tell me, after they killed her, what did they do? They threw her body away? Did they not do a funeral? Because if the whole army is like fighting for the slain royal family, for the slain king, queen, and princess. That's the whole model, the whole mothership. Every time they do this uh, almost Hitler-like, the only thing is left is, hi, shy. <laughs> they do this thing, they really bump their chest, whatever. They always say for the slain king, queen, and princess of light, whatever crap. So, how is this bitch alive? If she was in a room with people that literally killed her parents in front of her, and then her so-called bodyguard shot her in cold blood, and she had the nerve to say, I forgive you, and boom, a light and it emerges from her like a guardian dove or some shit. And then she falls to the ground in her last breath. And then the light disappears. Apparently when she's shot, light comes out of her. Whatever. But she's somehow alive. And somehow General Titus knows this how. I don't fucking know. But let's pretend he knows how. So he knows how this girl uh, is alive. Okay. How is she alive? They're gonna find her. How the fuck did she escape the motherland? I mean, like, if you're in a room, if you were in a room of niggas who want to kill you, and they frame another person for killing you and your entire family, that person flees. Shouldn't they hold a royal funeral for you niggas? A display that indeed the king is gone, indeed the princess is gone. For everybody in town to fucking believe them. <sighs> Whatever, Snyder. Whatever. 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 This is like a low budget film, but with all the money in the world. I mean, like, how was an elite assassin? With one of the coolest blades ever. Killed by random soldiers with no fucking skills or anything. And get saved by a kid with a pocket, with a butter knife or something. Snyder. You couldn't kill off a better actor like that. That's the worst way to kill someone. 
I mean, like, how how are these... Okay. Another weird thing is, when they were picking the wheat, they were picking the wheat by hand. Literally slashing them with a more with an old ancient blade. But somehow they had an anti-gravity vehicle thing majigi which carried all the uh the wheat so you have that but you don't have a fucking tractor right what are those gravity carts whatever you know those things in the mandalorian where they pick up big heavy shit they have that but they don't have a tractor of course they don't have a, fuck a tractor. They don't have anything to harvest all that shit. But somehow they've been in a trading. They've been in the wheat business for centuries. They've been trading with the neighboring towns and villages. But somehow they managed to purchase a anti gravity cart, not a fucking harvesting tractor or harvesting device. Of course, I believe. Yeah. Yep, I really believe you. Yep, it's the most. And, and another thing, how the fuck is this ship that is 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 <laughs> is fueled by coal? Coal, nigga, coal. You mean to tell me you got all this thingamajiggies, but you got niggas with shuffles? This movie was stupid. You got niggas with, with shovels. Shoveling coal. To run the ship. You're running a ship with coal. Is that what you're telling me? How are you running these uh, uh, light cruise things? How are they running? There's a little coal people in the dungeon. <laughs> in the lower deck of the engine. How is that shit running? Oh, we'll pretend it's a battery. That's being charged through the coal. Yeah, we'll pretend that's how it's charged and that's how it's done. Oh no, Mr. Reach. Calm the fuck down. Like, you can't be bashing this film to a point of no remorse. I mean, like, she blew up this thing here. And for some weird reason, I'm supposed to believe that this ship that gets blown up because some bitch Cora planted 10 or 11 or even 5 grenades on a skeleton head looking like thing that seems to be the source of power that's connected to the nigga shoveling coal and underneath it somehow has noticeable grenades but everybody's such for useless shit they're looking for bags Back, they, they found a bag. Like, sir, we found a bag. We found a bag. She's here. Really? And they cannot see, for the life of me, these fucking grenades. I mean, like, the first moment they stepped in, you could see the grenades. She did not hide them. Even when she was planted, I was like, why isn't this bitch hiding these? And then she didn't hide them. She put them in plain sight, like all five or ten of them, like do 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 do, in this head thing, majiggy. And ten, fifteen soldiers step into this chamber, engine room thingy, and none of them see it. They see it when, at the last minute, when it's like five, four, three, two, one, kaboom, and it blows up. And for some weird fucking reason. When the ship is falling, remember, this ship was this way. When it falls, it goes this way. You know what happens? Everything goes to the bottom. Everything falls to the bottom. Even the fight scene between the Emerald and Korra, they keep fighting from above, falling down. Keep hanging on to, to, to weirdly placed stripping poles. I'm going to assume they are, but whatever. They keep hanging on to these poles and fighting each other out. And after all that's done, the Admiral is killed, slain by the head, because they don't want to show us that. For some weird reason, for some weird reason a man's head getting decapitated is too graphic, so they won't show it to us. 
They somehow boarded the ship they came in with. For some weird reason, they managed to crawl to the ship. This nigger bear in mind. The ship is still falling, my friend. Which means things above are falling down. Now, if I'm not correct, if I'm correct, the ship was down here. If this is the ship, the ship was here. They were fighting somewhere in the middle. That means they're going up the ship with the nigger who's bleeding. Being dragged around by a girl. Whatever, who cares? She's strong, she's the scar giver, she's the most strongest person ever. She managed to carry this nigga to the ship, which, oddly enough, the ship uh, did not fall with the rest of the property. But uh, whatever. The ship does not fall when everything is falling the opposite direction. It goes the opposite direction. Somehow they managed to get into the ship, uh, steer it on, and get out of this mighty ship, and they fall to the ground, and then this nigger dies within the last minute. Of course he dies, and then confesses his undying love to his beautiful girlfriend, I love you, and then dies, and then the girl says, oh, 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 I love you, she didn't say, and she said, I love you, and then these uh, uh, rebels, so-called rebels, this damn show is named after them, for fuck's sakes, they show up, they start blowing shit up, acting all cool. Our new commander, our new commander. Do -do 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 -do. And they have a banquet of a funeral. And everybody says all these nice, nice things. And somehow everybody in the village is alive. And the village that was attacked by a huge fleet of men has less than five casualties. Of of course they do. The villagers who've been mining or, or not harvesting wheat for the rest of their lives get two days of training somehow. Managed to defeat. Forget about defeating. Fine, they defeated them. Let's just say they defeat them. Managed to withstand and to outlive a fleet. A ship of men who trained and dedicated their lives since they were kids. If I'm to believe this Korra character started training to be a soldier at a tender age. I'm assuming all these other fucking soldiers did the same thing. And they were debested by niggas with two days of training. Yep. And niggas who were training by firing against grass. And chopping grass with blades. Somehow are so elite, so powerful, so powerful. They destroyed a whole fucking fleet of ships. This film is an abomination. This film is disrespect. Is an insult to human intellect. <sighs> and the film is okay. And the fantasy is rubbish. Too many plot holes. But a lot of people will say, oh, I love these characters' backstory. I die. No. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish and I'm sorry if I've spoiled it but this is the worst shit ever the dialogue the storytelling uh, the pacing the script is atrocious first half of the movie is just a bunch of zero useless uh, point really it's useless a bunch of flashbacks harvesting wheat pretending to train and then the second half is a waste of a war I expected a battle, I expected a bloodbath, and I get a bunch of bullies being punched in the face by the kids they've bullied. Yeah, there's a lot of explosions though. Yeah, it wouldn't be a Snyder film without explosions. Kaboom! Kaboom! Oh, it's exploding! It's amazing! Um, this is a very war film. I don't even know why I enjoyed the first one. <sighs> this is disappointing. I mean, like, if this guy, Admiral Noble, apparently falls from a great distance to the ground, 
and presumed dead. Somehow escaped with a little scar on his chest and like, oh. Star giver gave me this. I should wear it with pride. That's the only scar this nigga gets? Oh, for fuck's sake, get out of here. Get out of here. <sighs> I just brought a bad guy from the dead. Just to kill him. What was the point of all in all of this? Ah, but I will say, there's some great special effects throughout the whole thing, and it looks slick there and there, but uh, the plot was trash. I think this story had the potential to be great, in my personal opinion. I just feel like the plot, the script, the screenwriting, it's rubbish. Everything else is great. I mean, like, the graphics, the ship... Uh, the the lightsaber thingies, the, the blades, oh, they're they're really good. The the the, the, the mechanics, the the contraptions, the the, the bloody the, 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 what's the thing, um, the bloody radio they have that has a, a glass like case, and then it it shows a hologram of the individual you're talking to. That's really cool. It's not like boo, like when you you know those great light holograms where. In Star Wars, where it's like the person is in the room with you. They're like in full life-sized. If they did that, that would have been way cooler. But I will say, we're going to pretend that guy didn't have state-of-the-art technology with them. So he had only that. Because there's actually a scene where, I don't know if it's the first one, where this, there's this whole full life uh, hologram thing. So, I will say... The graphics are incredible. The story writing is just crap. Yep. Graphics. Yeah. So, I don't know. Am I saying the first one was great and this one is trash? Maybe. Am I saying they are both trash? Uh, maybe I am. I just feel like I wasted two hours of my life watching garbage. Now that was entertaining. Please let us hang out yet another time. Remember to like and subscribe. Adios, folks. Adios.